This time on Square Roots. The war that divides the galaxy has cast its dark shadow upon the distant desert planet Rosa. Highly valued for its natural resources, Rosa has been put under direct control of the Longardian Federation in an attempt to prevent evasion by the Draxian Empire. Under Longordia's watchful eye, the enslaved Rosans now find themselves forbidden to leave the planet. Rogue Galaxy! Hi, and welcome to Square Roots Podcast, the classic RPG podcast, where we play through a classic RPG one chunker at a time. I'm your host, which means everything's gone wrong, uh, John Brandon, and with me is Matthew Skull Camel Van Zant. No, I will not be the nicknamed sir. My name is Matthew Van Zant. Listeners, don't believe a word this liar says. <laughs> You're an imposter. Also with me is everyone's favorite host, Vanessa. I'm Vanessa, everyone's favorite host. It's true. I'm not going to argue with you. Today we're starting a new game. Do you know what game it is? Who, me? Sure. Well, I sure do. We're playing Rogue Galaxy from developers Capcom. Level 5. Level 5. Originally for the... GameCube PlayStation, PlayStation 2, 2 <laughs> released in 19... 2005. 2005. <laughs> all the facts. Vanessa mm-hmm. has all of them. She is a real pro. Do mm-hmm. not test her. No, no, none of that gatekeeping. Mm-mm. I won't stand <laughs> for it. And so since it's our first episode of Rogue Galaxy, we'll be starting from the beginning. A very good place to start. Yes. When you and read, you begin with A, B, C. Before we dive sing, in, can you begin somebody with tell me, me what a rogue galaxy Do is? Me. Is Do the whole me. galaxy like a thief? A rogue galaxy is a galaxy that's gone rogue. It doesn't well, play by your rules. Like there's rogue planets rotations. that have broken, mm-hmm. that are not orbiting a star. Mm-hmm anymore that's right uh so given that galaxies well i don't know if galaxies rotate anything else they probably do it seems like celestial objects like are always rotating a galaxy go away from center ah a center of the universe Mm -hmm. Mm. it expand and expand and expand so rogue galaxy i guess is like heading back to the core well jaster rogue is named Rogue, so maybe it's like his galaxy. That's <laughs> Say what I it figured. again. Say it again. So a rogue galaxy is like a galaxy that swims upstream. Yes. Does it like jump up waterfalls and crazy stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like those parasites that swim up your pee into your urethra. Oh no. We talking about dick worms? Yeah, those <laughs> weird dick worms. <laughs> so no. a rogue galaxy is like a dick worm. Exactly. But I I think it's like a clever play on the main character's terrible name, Jaster Rogue. Say it again. Jaster Rogue. (laughs) It's stupid. Is that the worst name? (laughs) It's got to be up there. Yeah, it's really bad. Yep. I I don't like Jaster Rogue. This wasn't great, but at least it wasn't Jaster. (laughs) Well, you know what, though? What's better or worse? Squall Lionheart, oh, or oh. Jaster Rogue. Well, we haven't Oof, played Final Fantasy VIII for the podcast yet, and oh, and we I never will. will. No, we will, and I am going to relish it so hard. <laughs> it's going to get that HD remaster. I'm telling you, it's coming. <laughs> I've got an inside man at Square, and it's called I guess sometimes, and then lie about getting information. There is a PC version. It came out. Like a year after the PS1 version. Yeah, I actually had the PC version as a teen. Oh. It had a bunch of discs. Ooh. So, Rogue Galaxy. How did yes. we decide to do this, and why isn't it Chrono Cross? 
Well, because Jim had to take a break and Jim wants to be tortured. I don't know if he wants to be tortured, but he will be tortured. Yeah, I think we just decided that his punishment for taking a break is that we'll play Chrono Cross as the first game when he comes back. Yes. I don't think we said that. (laughs) But we are going to play it when he's back. And so we did a vote and... Rogue Galaxy somehow won because people are monsters. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think this is the second game that none of us have a strong attachment or nostalgia to that we've played. Never even heard of it before we selected it for the show. Uh, Same here, except I'd never played it. I'd never heard of it when it was out. I... Uh, we've talked about doing it for the show for a couple of years, but other than that, I've never, I've got no experience. So we are all going to be big baby fresh eyes. Oh, you mean we get to play this new game? No, big baby fresh eyes. It's big me. baby fresh eyes. Big baby fresh eyes. Oh, big baby fresh eyes. Wow. Oh, b- big. Is that like those twins from uh, Nothing But Trouble? Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's okay. Little baby fresh have eyes. Dicks for noses. <laughs> did the twins have those? I don't think they did. Just the just the judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they had a dick for a nose. That was one of the first movies I watched as a kid. Who started in that like, movie? Uh, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase. Um, oh, remember when Chevy Chase had that tease. dick for a nose? No, it was Dan Aykroyd. Everybody yeah, Chevy Chase was the John. straight man. <laughs> yeah, he was. And Now Chevy uh, Chase just has a dick for a brain, am I right? Whoa. hey But I watched that movie on VHS after it came out, and I remember thinking, I do not like this movie. And it was one of the first movies I really acknowledged that it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. The movie was bad. Yeah. Sometimes as a kid, you think any movie must be good, or else why would they have made it? Yeah. But that's a fallacy. It is. I don't remember having a face like that. I'm pretty sure I've always been curmudgeonly. What? Oh. Hey, guys, how do you level up? <laughs> Let's move on to the level up segment where we talk about our leveling up for the week, what we did to gain skills and abilities. Matthew hates it when I describe it like that. Yeah, because Matthew then examines his inadequacies and right. feels that he hasn't gained any skills or abilities this week. And then Aww, he questions Maybe what he's he has. Doing with maybe he had life. an awesome week where he learned how to parkour. Did you learn how to parkour, Matt? I, I did, in fact, learn how to parkour this weekend. Hang on, oh. I'll put on a demonstration for you. Oof, ah, Whoa! Oof, whoa. Oof, ah, wow! <laughs> He's like an Assassin's Creed character come to life. Yeah, if I'm back. the character just walked off the edge of the building Ooh. instead of leaping or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Go with the bit, Vanessa. I am. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Matthew, how did you really level up? Uh, great, great, great question, John. Great question. How did Mm -hmm. I level up is the question, and I'm going to answer it with words right now. (laughs) The thing that you did is about to be told. (laughs) I, uh, 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 You should talk it up some more. Like, you won't believe what Matthew did. It's so amazing. Uh, how did I level up? Well, let me tell you, and it's going to really, you're going to know about it. So there's this thing and you're going to love it. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you now how I leveled Find up some time. my skills. <laughs> so I watched Big Mouth season two in its entirety over the last couple of days and it's wonderful. And I think everybody should check that show out because mm-hmm. it's hilarious. Yeah. You told us about that on the uh, patron only level up. It's gotcha. true. <laughs> you did. We talked about Nick Kroll for a while. Mm-hmm. So I'm still playing Spider Man. I have gotten into it enough that where I'm clearly towards the end, I'm going to finish the game. Um, so when are we going to do that for Instant Classic? When it's not eighty dollars plus tax Canadian. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Um, 
That's all I got, man. I got nothing. Jeez. I broke a television yesterday. What? Okay, tell us about that. Yeah. That's a level up. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> See, I have a television by my back door because I have a little pool out back, and I like to go sometimes to sit on the porch or in the pool and watch the television. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I was doing that, and it started to rain. And I've got a little pop up, which is like a thing. It's like a tent that you can just kind of pops up. It's like a covering, low roof. And I was trying to put that up, and it fell. I don't know exactly what happened, but it tipped the television over, and the television got a smashed. Oh no! Yeah, it's a real bummer. Oh, TV. Oh, Matthew's outside TV. Yeah. What, how big was the TV? Uh, it's like a forty-two inch, I think. Oh, okay. So anyway, that's how I leveled up. I smashed my TV. What about you, John? Watching TV in the pool sounds amazing. I only want to watch TV while in a pool. It's good for weekends when there's lots of sports on and um, and I have like a cooler of beer mm-hmm. and can sit out there all day and drink and float and watch sports. I'm surprised you're not more tanned. Uh, the pool has one big downside, which is that it has two huge trees towering above it. So oh. it is always too cold and never enough sun. Oh, oh. well, it's still a pool. Yeah, it I is, think yeah, that sounds great. lovely and shady yeah. and nice. Listen, yeah, it's still 100 degrees outside. You don't care that it's cold or shady. Yeah. It's like 40 degrees here in Vancouver. Mm, it's been chilly where I am this week as well. Write that down yeah. in your Vanessa journal. And... I'm about to level up my hurricane survival skills with this oh. hurricane that's heading up the Gulf. So that's Is it? I declared a state of emergency already. It's supposed to hit the top of the state on Wednesday. Excuse me. Hmm, I wasn't aware. Well, I hope you're going to be okay. Uh, I'm sure I'll be fine. All right, pass it off there, Matthew. I did. Ready. John, how did you level up? Oh, me? I leveled up by hooking up my Sega Dreamcast. Ooh. Fucking nerd. I got my Sega Dreamcast. But now I want to get like the, there's an adapter that you can do like a VGA and an HDMI out. And it's like 30 bucks. So it's really not that bad. And the Dreamcast was interesting because it could do HD. Like, back in 1999, it had a VGA output that was capable of some games like Soul Calibur of running at 1024 by 768 which is wow. technically HD. It's like 4 by 3 HD, so it's kind of a weird one. And uh, so I kind of want to do that, because I was having fun playing Metropolis Street Racer, and that game is... It's by the team that Bizarre that made uh, Project Gotham 1 through 4, mm-hmm. and they also make the Forza Horizon games, mm-hmm. and... It's really fun because racing slow old cars is my favorite. Like, this is all 90s and early 2000s British cars, which is really fun and weird. And you just get all these, like, models. Except the game is punishingly hard. Like, you have to do basically perfect on all tracks to get to the next set of races. And there is no easy mode. It is like, it's like a PC game and, like, it just wants you to get good and not have fun. But it's also a fun game. Uh, I like it more than Forza Horizon 3, which I was playing this weekend. And I'm liking a bit better once I found it had a 90s Corvette, because 90s Corvettes are the coolest cars ever made. You can drive one and be instantly the coolest person in your block. I could. Or... Yeah. I'm the... oh, Vanessa driving an, a 90s Corvette would be amazing. Is it a stick shift, though? Because I, I can't drive a stick. Most of them were sold with uh, automatic transmissions. Nice. So you can definitely get one. And you would look like a crazy crime fighter or something. Oh. People would assume you're a superhero. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty much it for my level up. I helped a friend move, and I played Dreamcast and uh, Forza Do Horizon. Do you think with this uh, glut of retro consoles that we're getting right now, We might get a Dreamcast. I would love if Sega did a Saturn or Dreamcast. I don't think they will because Sega, like Sega has re-released some Dreamcast games, but it's always been the same four over and over basically. And Shenmue, 
I don't think they have any interest in spending any money, like, emulating all the other good Dreamcast games or any of the Saturn games, mm. which is frustrating and sad. But, I could play some Power Stone in a hot Yeah. Game. I could play some Soul Calibur for the Dreamcast. Oh, that that mm-hmm. one you can play elsewhere. I could play some all those light gun games, which are impossible to play now, were pretty fun. House of the Dead, Typing of the Dead, it was pretty great. <laughs> Typing of Vanessa. the Dead was brilliant. <laughs> oh, I, I did. I booted up Fantasy Star Online. Ah, I just hate that game. It's so ugly and bad. <laughs> I hate it. I hate Aww. it so much. Is it a real I, online game or is it just called online? Uh, that game was, it used the modem that came with the Dreamcast. So you could play four player. It was like, it's a lot like Diablo, basically. Mm. It's not a JRPG. It is a Diablo. And you could play it four players with like a lobby with like 20 players as well. And there are some like old servers that people, or some like unofficial ones, you have to mod your Dreamcast to be able to play mm-hmm. or play it via emulator. Uh, but I just don't like that game. I think that game is very bad. <laughs> And was one of the more disappointing games I've ever played. Actually, the Dreamcast was full of games that really disappointed me, like Shenmue and Fantasy Star Online. More like a nightmare cast, am I right? Oh, But Resident Evil Code Veronica was great. Yeah, I just want to play like Sonic Adventure and Soul Calibur and Jet Set Radio and um, Power Stone. That would be amazing. I want to play Skies of Arcadia. Might have been uh, Jet, Jet Grind. Grind Radio on the Dreamcast. There's Jet Gr- I think they changed the name for the American release it. to Jet Grind. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a... Li- but anyway. Uh, but it Jet- was Jet Set in Japan and then Jet Set Radio Future for the Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Vanessa. Yeah. Jet Set Radio Future is not as good as Jet Grind Radio, in my opinion. Hmm. I, I wasn't good at either of them. How did you level up, Vanessa? Start crying, nerd boys. Whip out your little (laughs) tissues and your handkerchiefs and your pocket squares because the age of you is over and 13 is here. That's right. I watch Doctor Who. Lady (gasps) Doctor Edition. Lady Doctor Edition. Uh, I liked it a lot. It was good. I was you... a fan of Jodie Whittaker before and continue to be one now. Were you a Doctor Who fan before? Sure. Not the kind of Doctor Who fan who watches the old Doctor Who's. No, Aww. no, 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 no. The kind of Doctor Who fan who got into Doctor Who when the Doctor became young and hot because I'm shallow. <laughs> there must have been, I mean, Tom Baker was younger. Younger than what? Not younger than me. Younger than John Pertwee. Well, that's no <laughs> small feat. I mean, it's no great feat. It's, you know. And there's Adric on there, who is a teen heartthrob. Ooh. It's difficult for me to see people from those eras as young, even though they were when they were filmed, because just the styling is so of a time and a place, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I've seen all of the new ones from nine onward, and I like them. I I feel like I like them quite a bit, but I realize I have this weird like memory hole when it comes to Doctor Who, where if I were to like try to think of an episode or even a season arc, it's really difficult for me to do it. It's like I've watched them all and I've enjoyed them, and I can think of like one or two standout episodes, but like, like I was the trying... Stone Angels, yeah. Or turn left. Um, so I was like trying to remember what happened to 12. The one with the BBC, like kids, uh, that, that splash screen that like hypnotized children. That one was weird. Mm, yeah, that see, that one's not ringing much of a bell. Oh. And I know I've seen it. Is that the one that had, is that the one where the kids put the masks on and then they had like snakes come out of their eyes and stuff? What? That's Season of the Witch, Halloween 3. Uh... <laughs> Dr. Halloween, that's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, I like Dr. Who and uh, Jodie Whittaker. I became a fan of from her work in Broadchurch, uh, also starring David Tennant, former doctor. Mm-hmm. 
And but um... it's she's not the lady in Broadchurch. What? She's not that lady I love in Broadchurch, the one who was in uh, the Mitchell and Webb look. No, she is the mother of the right vanished yeah. child. Bride. That's right, the mother of the bride. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Doctor Who, check it out and uh, cry while you watch it because it's a lady time now. Uh, uh, can I tell you, since we're all friends here, my my general reason for not really liking new Doctor Who? Mm-hmm. Not, not her. I mean, just the series and all of them. Yes. Um, I mean, we can guess that it's because it has a woman in it now, obviously. No. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, <laughs> my hard time getting through the first couple of seasons of the new Doctor Who is they have a lot of alien races that are just fat people. And then there's, like, the episode about evil, uh, about fat being sentient and murdering fat people. Yeah. That, that show has some issues with fat people. That show has a lot of issues with a lot of kind of people. And I think the general hope is that now that it has a new showrunner, some of that will be assuaged. And I understand that a lot of fat people li- really like those cellulitis or whatever they're called, lipids. or They're really I cute. Can't. I think that episode is one of the worst things I've ever seen on television Aww. in my life. And the yeah, the other, you know, the big farty fat ones that replaced the British government. Oh, was a right. Real, I yeah. Hated, I hated that. And there's just, it, that stuff seems real popular. And I just, it that turns me off of that show so hard. And that, also that they like always go to a place and then everyone but the doctor and his friends die mm-hmm. every time. It's It gets a little repetitive. Yeah. I mean, it's. I'm not a mega super fan, um, clearly, because I cannot remember what happens in the episodes. <laughs> Despite, and I must reiterate, I have seen all of them, some of them mm-hmm. more than once. Um, yeah, I mean, it it has its issues. If you're looking for like a really like socially predecent show, I wouldn't necessarily go with that. It's British. And uh, they, uh, at least, what's his face? Russell T. Davies really had a thing about fat people. Like, Russell T. Davies has a thing about fat people and a thing about women. I think the general consensus is that Mark Gatiss kind of keeps him in check when they work together. Okay. And when they don't, Russell T. Davies just goes completely bonkers off his rocker. Gross. But then, you know, uh, the British always claim, like, oh, I wasn't really being gross. It's just our dry <laughs> sense of humor or whatever. But I don't have tolerance for that kind of, like, winky fake misogyny anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm over that. All right. But new Doctor Who lady is good. New is Doctor Who saying. lady is good. I just start getting to the episodes with that other lady who had something to do with the Time Lord. She's like an older British actress. Yeah. She, well, not older, but Catherine Tate. Is mm-hmm. that who it is? I think that's as far as I've gotten where it starts really getting to her. And that seems cool. That seems Catherine like Tate good... is my absolute favorite companion. She okay. and David Tennant were so good together and had some great episodes. So, yeah. I mean, if you want to watch it, you don't have to watch like from the beginning, but... If you haven't seen it and you're curious, maybe uh, check out Catherine Tate and David Tennant's season and then uh, jump right into the Lady Doc because it's lady time now. What about the last two doctors? Were they any good? Matt Smith and the other guy? I liked Matt Smith. Uh, I like Peter Capaldi as an actor a lot, but he didn't really resonate with me as a character. Okay. He was sort of like a sad old man. And I'm not that into, like, male tears these days, except to drink them as delicious soup. That's why you told us to cry earlier. Yes, I want my delicious soup. (laughs) I want my delicious salty soup. Ew. Yeah, I also am pretty grossed out. Let's get this show on the road. (laughs) All right. Uh, Well, let's open up. The Space Quest log. But not Space the Space Quest, Quest log. log. Because the Space Quest beep, log beep, will be when we actually play beep, through Space Quest. Beep, one beep, through five. Beep, 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 AKA the good ones. Music. Um, so that's not going to happen. But <laughs> tell me all about Jester Rogue. Okay. Paint so a picture, get... John. How does this game open? 
This game opens with young Chaz slash Jaster Rogue, because Jaster Rogue is Chaz from Fantasy Star 4. They are the same person. <laughs> They're all the same person, John. They're all Chaz. He's foraging out in the desert on a, a planet that's not Tatooine. He's riding a skull camel horse. And meanwhile, a robot and not a robot? Okay, like it's a is Scotsman. Mole man. <laughs> it's a Scotsman. <laughs> is he a Volus? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A robot and a fancy looking Volus. A Scottish are Volus. Arriving to this planet Rosa that Vanessa was talking about before, mm-hmm. looking for Desert Claw. What? That sounds lame. He's like a yeah. famous pirate or something, right? He's a famous hunter. What does he hunt? Hunts. He hunts just hunts. like, just like Chaz and Alice. Yeah, they hunters. seem to have some kind of economy based on monster slaying, which is yeah. pretty common in these fantasy worlds. Yeah. So we've got a real uh, desert planet setting, and we got Chaz. There's no Alice, monsters. Though. There's Kalo Nord. <laughs> if you remember him, yes, this guy, I do. Th- Desert Claw looks just like Kalo Nord. He does. And in fact, uh, in KOTOR, the desert planet had sort of a hunting economy going on as well with the hunting yeah. lodge and whatnot. Uh, so uh, Chaz is getting back to town. I don't remember the name of the city, uh, but the planet they are, on, they are on is Rosa. And this is a real Mos Eisley kind of kind of city. Maybe a bit more, a bit more, um, uh, Middle Eastern, like you. So you definitely have. I mean, that was filmed in what Tunisia, right? The uh, the old was it Tunisia or Turkey? I think it was Tunisia. Size? Yeah. So it's, it was filmed in Tunisia, uh, and this has a real Tunisian kind of feel to it. I guess uh, you have uh, women wearing hijabs, and mm-hmm. you have men wearing fezes. Mm-hmm. Now the thing that. Star Wars did, and we'll get more into this next episode, the thing Star Wars does to not be racist is when it took its ethnic stereotypes, it applied them to Muppets or like CG cartoon rabbits. Mm-hmm. Or like Fishmen. And oh, that so was... other races are no longer represented as people, and you're saying that's somehow better. Well, that... There were humans, and at least they took these ethnic stereotypes and kind of uh, obfuscated them a bit. I don't know. Because depicting them as humans starts bringing up real questions. This Not so much this episode. This episode is fine. It's just sort of a uh, uh, Middle Eastern style culture uh, in the middle of this desert planet. But the next episode is where it gets iffy. Mm. To be fair, uh, there are some real questions brought up with the prequel Star Wars episodes that uh, definitely exploited racial stereotypes. Yes, for sure. And I would say that there's elements to the original too, but let's not get super into that. Uh, so you have this like uh, stone-built desert town. Uh, it's very ugly. I think that the game looks better once you get to the second planet, but the first planet is not a good-looking game. Mm-hmm. It looks very sub Final Fantasy XII, which was a much higher budget game, so I can understand it looking way better. This game has a real cell shaded cartoon. It does and it doesn't, because they use they still have textured models, while cell shading is more like flat colors. And I think if they'd got they'd leaned heavier into the cell shading, the game would have looked better. Yeah, you're right. It's not like full blown cell shading, like a um... like a jet grind radio. Yeah, or a uh, Zelda with the boat. That's all yeah. I can come up with. Yeah, um, I think if they'd gone that way, it would have looked amazing. So this this kid comes out of the desert uh, riding some sort of camel that is like skeleton. It's real weird, but it looks mm-hmm. fun. And yep. he uh, he gives something over to a couple of guys who give him something that he complains about. Yeah, Units he got a couple of chickens or portions or. Oh yeah, chickens. those robot chickens. Mm-hmm. He cuts I love some those. chickens and he gets his ration. Yes. And uh, and he goes. What does he do? He goes to church. He, well, it's because his adopted father Raúl uh, runs that church. What a great name for a uh, 
alien living on a desert planet. Raul. <laughs> uh, he's a human, and he uh, is... What do they... I don't remember what they talk about. God we or get something. Some, yeah, we get some uh, basic setup here, I guess. He's... Well, basically, Jaster is bitching about the Long Guardian guards. They're like, you know, they said they're here to help save us for the Draxians, but really, they're just, like, making us into slaves, and this sucks. There's, so there's some sort of dumb war going on, and the planet Rosa is occupied by one of these forces. Yeah. But neither of them seem like good guys, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's the impression I'm getting. We also get a cutaway to a R2-D2 and C-3PO ripoff, and uh, they are a big, tall, finicky robot and a little mole man with a Scottish accent, as John said. They yep. are looking for a man named Desert Claw. Desert and, Claw. And then all of a sudden, a monster attacks the town. Yeah, well, I mean... They they sort of have this uh, nothing interesting happens here kind of talk like Luke has with Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. Uh-huh. Uh, and then suddenly something interesting happens. A monster attacks the city. And uh, everyone is screaming and running away if you go outside. Mm-hmm. And you have happen to have a sword because you're like a hunter guy. And you're like, I'm going to go help. There are a lot of stormtroopers around doing nothing. Yeah, I don't know how good these stormtroopers actually are. Good as in, like, morally good, or good as in effective at stormtrooping? Uh, effective. <laughs> effective. Now, uh, you you do get some random encounters here that are these, like... They, do you ever watch... I'm sure you have watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Mousers? What? Yeah. Those little... The Mousers. What's a Mouser? A little Double. robot chicken. Yeah, they're little chompy robots the size of, like, chickens with big old chompy mouths, and they walk around on two little stubby legs. Hmm. Yeah. Not ringing a bell. So you get your, like, tutorial combat, where you first fight some of these things, and what do you think of the combat system, Vanessa? I don't like it, because the camera is awful. Uh. Um I had to invert the camera controls just to make navigating the world pleasant and doable. Me uh, too. The... Me as well. Oh, well, there you go. They should have just had it inverted from the get-go. Yeah. The camera is wonky. The combat is like a real-time Kingdom Hearts kind of combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, not my favorite thing because it feels too much like... The game is trying to like make me be good at video game or something like that, <laughs> as opposed to just taking my sweet time and thinking about what I'm going to do and then hitting the attack button. Um, but it's all right. I mean, the the difficulty level seems wildly disproportionate. Like most games, yeah. like it kind of gradually <clears throat> edges up the difficulty. But in this game, I will easily cut through swarths and swaths of enemies and then get to one that has this huge difficulty spike and really have to struggle to get through the battle really uh, yeah like after that you kill that the monster that's attacking the city i just got into a random battle and it was like eight enemies and they just destroyed me mm-hmm. that's weird yeah, it, this game is super weird and uh the next set of levels will have these mimic treasure chests that are crazy hard yes i accidentally opened one and i died and then i turned off the game in rage i rage quit (laughs) oh no that's what happened (laughs) don't rage quit vanessa we need you i rage quit i was like mars needs women (laughs) does it well i'm the only one here so i guess it's up to me you know i was just thinking the other day when I was driving to work, like that, you can make a porn parody of Mars, ne- Mars needs moms without changing the title. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, off we go. Jester Hi, Road. my name's Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Is your Bruno mom Mars. home? <laughs> uh, we go to hunt down this monster and you know stop it before it I don't know kills the town. And but we're quickly this... joined by a mysterious man. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say much. He looks exactly like the character model from KOTOR, Kalanord. Mm-hmm. 
and he's got a fancy orange sword. And he's like level 20 or something, so you know he's yeah. like the Oron badass guy of this world. Yeah, he does have an Oron to him, doesn't he? Mm-hmm, an Oron aura. So I mean we can expect him to show up and join the party later and be really good? I guess so. Or maybe like by the time you get, he get him back, he's just like, the same as the rest of everyone else. Later. I'd be well, surprised if he doesn't come back and join the party. Spoiler alert for something we're going to discuss in 10 seconds. But uh, so what happens here? We fight some monsters and head deeper into the town. Yeah. And uh, they, you have to do some platforming, like That's to right. jump over some <laughs> objects to, and some broken bridges. Yes. And it's not a platformer. And it should not be trying to be a platformer because, again, the camera is wonky. It reminds me a lot of Kingdom Hearts in this manner. Mm-hmm. And the you, the random encounters are okay. Like, I don't hate this game. You have two attacks, at least as, as Jaster. You can start switching later. Uh, he has a gun for long-range attacks and then a sword for up-close attacks, but he runs out of action points and cannot swing his sword. That's the uh, weirdest thing. It's like you're in the middle of battle, and then it's like, oh, no, you gotta like have a little breaky, and then you can fight some more. A bit like Parasite Eve, which had a similar kind of system, except that you could aim in Parasite Eve. Right, that's right. And uh, items and stuff also use resource points, so you have to be careful to, because uh, you have to heal your, like, I keep buying dozens of health potions i go through so many of them in this game oh yeah wow. it is not a game where you can like just chill and not do that yeah and they, they start the uh, yeah he doesn't i don't think he's calling out attacks yet is he where you like can uh, he's like can i do this and you're like yes or no not at this point okay but that, that's another kingdom heartsy element to it is like the allies do help you and you can sort of give them instructions on what to do mm-hmm and uh, so you get past, ju- like, you you do this fight and then have to jump over a set of pipes. And the desert claw guy seems to like you and says you're very good at what you do. Which is great and makes me feel amazing and powerful. Yeah. Like a real man. Mm-hmm. And then he spots the friends from earlier. R2. Yeah, he sees Steve and Simon, the most fantasy <laughs> robot names ever, and gives you his sword. His sword is called uh, something fancy. Desert Rose. Seeker. Desert Seeker. Oh, okay. And he suddenly disappears while you're holding this super powerful sword. The two robots see you and are like, hey, he's got the sword. That must be the Desert Claw. I don't you think know, the this short is one's a, a robot. Typical scam where you're right. This dude has like gotten into our good graces, and then he's like, "Oh, just hold on to these like goods for me while these cops come by." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then you're the one holding the stolen goods. Hmm. I don't know why he wants people to believe that we are the Desert Claw. Probably because he has a warrant out for his arrest. But these two robots join you. After well. You've- so he gives you the sword, he also gives you the pep talk, and he gives you a camera. Yeah. Oh, the battle recorder. Mm-hmm. And he's and like, he's like take bro. videos for me, kid. Yeah, he's like, take, make some home movies for me. Yeah. Uh, With those yourself monsters. doing stuff. Yeah. And then you can turn it in for points. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So you befriend these two guys. They uh, there's a bit of a mistaken identity thing, and they believe you are the Desert Claw. Mm-hmm. Right. And they then you want go to hire off. you. Yeah, they want to hire you and talk about taking you back to their ship and their captain. They're space pirates, which mm-hmm. is pretty great. And there's and, this little uh, zany scene where they're like pulling Chaz's arm, and they're like, "Come on, buddy, let's go." And he's like, "No, I gotta save the town." And they're like, what do you want to do that for? You won't get hardly any points for that. We'll get you all the mm-hmm. points. But Chaz holds firm, and he is going to save the town. You mean Jaster Rogue? I'm not going to say and that. That's, <laughs> that's when you get to go fight a giant boss. This is a pretty impressive boss, I think. It's pretty huge. Yeah. And it introduces another weird... I, I This is a, a thing that hasn't been introduced since, but basically... It gives you this gun, 
that shoots platforms onto enemies so you can jump on their backs or heads. I hated this. Yeah, this was not <laughs> I was best. very bad at this. It was <laughs> awful. So there's like a weak point on the back of this turtle thing that's attacking the city. Yeah, the bosses are kind of Zelda-y where you kind of have to do some damage and then expose the yeah. weak point. And yeah, in this case, you have to climb up its back. I assume since we have this uh, platform slinging gun, this will become a regular thing. Yeah, I, I haven't done it since. But there's this turtle thing has these cuffs around its legs, so you have to like wear, break the cuffs, hurt the legs, and then the thing pops out of its back, and you have to get to that by using the platform gun, which generates these like glowing disc platforms you can stand on. I didn't I did. have a hard time with this boss, but I did have a hard time with frickin' Frack dying constantly. Like, I mean, just like in Kingdom Hearts <laughs> mm-hmm. and Final Fantasy XV, any of these games, these goddamn companions. Ugh, mm-hmm. Just, anyway. So I, s- I spent a lot of time healing them in between trying to jump on this thing's head. I had this a hard time re- getting up the platforms because. It's difficult to like make the character be pointed in the right direction. It's the yes. weird like top down view thing. It's and... interesting. I it's thought hard it... to see where to land. Yeah. For me. It felt to me that he kind of clicked onto the platforms. Like maybe there's a bit of uh, you know an attract. Like it's. I felt like the character model was kind of you know drawn to the platform. I don't, I, I miss them a lot. Mm-hmm. Really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also bad at video games. Yeah. So. Well, maybe you were overdoing it because I was doing it real light, and he just kind of seemed to go straight to where he needed to go. Hmm. All this stuff reminds me so much of Final Fantasy Twelve. Like him in Twelve, he wanted to be a sky pirate, not a space pirate, mm-hmm. and then like being rescued by a girl, which like very similar way that happens in a moment, including the same kind of vehicle. What we'll, girl? We'll get... Well, the. Rabbit girl. Well, why don't you tell us what happens here, John? About a girl yet? You're okay, fighting the well. monster. You're on its head. Mm-hmm. You're f- and uh, you kill it, and the town is saved. Yay! And desert claws like there's real potential in this one. Oh uh, yeah, and we get a little cutaway. Yeah, desert claws is like he could be even better than me. Hmm. And uh, the the robot and the Volus are like, oh, thank you very much. And, you know, <laughs> well, actually, they don't care. They just want to get you to the ship. And they're like, hey, if you come to the ship, uh, we will hire you. All you have to do is make your way there. And uh, Chaz is like, yeah, I, I guess I can do that. Uh, uh, but they are, they're very specific that you need to ha- keep 200 gold pieces or zil or zen or whatever it's called. Or else you will not be able to get... Uh, rent your skull camel so you won't be able to make it to the ship. I wonder if the game just ends at that point, if that's what you do. No, I'll there's continue. random encounters. Yeah, I was oh, gonna right. to <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so they, they wander off, and now you can... I don't think you have to go back to the church, do you? You don't have to, but I did. I yeah, did so not. Because they're like, oh, you should monster. go back and say goodbye to anyone you need to say goodbye to. So you have the option of going and seeing Raul for an extra cutscene. Yeah, I didn't yep. need to say goodbye to him, but I got an extra cutscene with him anyway. Yeah. Oh, so really? what happened in your your cutscene there, John? Uh, not much. You go say goodbye to Raul, and, and well, you sort of don't. He's you just start talking about how there's more to life than being in the city, and Raul's like, "Well, what are you trying to say?" And uh, Chaz is like, "Nothing. Uh, don't worry about it." And he just wanted to thank him for, like, being a good fake dad. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. And... I got the impression more that, you know, it was an orphan situation. Yeah. And Raul was the, you know, guy that ran the church that took care of him. Not that he was yeah. a father figure. Oh, I mean, he was, a fa- like, they were definitely, like, father-ish. Yeah, you're right. You know. Uh, but they, do, they, they, neither of them really says what's on their mind. You can tell both of them really know what's going on. So when you get to the gate, Raul shows up anyways. Either, I guess, either way. Yeah, because I got the gate scene. And then I think that's where you get a little cut scene of 
baby Chaz being left mm-hmm. in like a basket on the church steps, which you just, you just, I just know that someone's going to come along and be like, oh, Chaz, you're actually the baby of so and so, great emperor of yeah. the super. What happens if it's like a very good movie and they're like, actually, you're just kind of the parent, the, the, the child of drunks and, uh, you're not no one special. That would be great because then it would be like, hey, you don't have to be part of this elite ruling class in order to uh, have skills. You can make something exactly. of yourself no matter what your heritage is. And uh, there doesn't need to be some kind of mystical explanation for a woman to be good at something. She could just be <laughs> fucking good at it. <laughs> well, she does have mystical powers. Well, yeah, as all but- women do. Yeah. Whoops, yeah. I say anyway. too much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you also get, did, wait, did you get the cutscene of Chaz looking at the stars, Vanessa? Yeah, with Raul. Yeah. So he remembers like looking up at the stars and is like, oh, wow, maybe one day I'll get to go to these other planets. What are the other planets like? And Raul's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. He's like, the fuck uh, I look I like, like an astronomer? <laughs> I don't want to leave here. And and, uh, Chaz is like, I want to leave here. I want to see all the planets in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Except he's got more of an anime voice. So it's like, I want to go see all the planets in the galaxy. That's exactly what it's like. (laughs) I know. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so uh, Raul and him, they do not hug or anything. Probably too expensive to animate. But... Uh, they they do wish each other well on their journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chaz decides, I think at this moment, that he's going to save the planet. How? I don't know. It kind of comes out of nowhere. He's just what's like, I'm going to come planet? back and save this planet. That's just what people say when they leave their shitty small towns. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to med school, and then I'm going to come back and be a country doctor from my hometown. He's not coming back. He's going to New York General, and he's going to make a mint. New York City. <laughs> so these uh, pirates work for someone named Dogen Goa. <laughs> uh, Dogen Goa. And uh, uh, you rent your camel, and you go outside of the gates, and you get a nice. Well, this cutscene feels there's a very similar cutscene in Final Fantasy XII. Uh, but basically, let me lay it out for you. You ride into the desert, Lo- uh, Lawrence of Arabia style. You see the ship. In the uh, distance, you get towards it, except that a sandworm erupts. A big Mm -hmm. old sandworm. And can we talk for a moment about the ship? Because I was delighted. Oh, sure. I was so happy when I saw this spaceship. I was just tickled pink. I'm still pink. I'm so tickled. (laughs) This spaceship look alike a pirate ship. A uh, ye olde mm-hmm. wooden timber, lots of sails, pirate ship, but heckin' fat and tall. With some engines. With some that engines on it. Boosters. And I was just thrilled. I love it. I was expecting some clunky metal, stupid spaceship, but it's not. It's a fantasy ship, and I like it very much. It's like a spell jammer, if you remember that particular Dungeons & Dragons uh world no universe sure i didn't know what you're talking about but i like this ship (laughs) yeah so you get to the old timey ship and sandworms start attacking uh and you try to get towards the ship but they take off because they're in danger and they don't really care (laughs) they're just like heck and bye (laughs) sorry jazz Mm -hmm. i mean jester and uh, you have to dodge all these. You're, do- you're still on the space camel dodging all these sandworms. There seems to be many of them, mm-hmm. like everywhere. Yeah, there's like a million of them. It reminds me a lot of a cutscene from 12 where you're getting out of the castle and a cutscene from 9 where you're running away from this forest and all the vines are like everywhere. It Which surprised is, uh, I guess... me that Chaz was surprised by these sandworms because he lives on this planet and mm-hmm. goes into the desert on a camel all the time, but he seemed to have never seen such a thing before. And he doesn't Maybe... even wear a still suit. Like, how is he going to survive out in the desert? Maybe these Moab Deebs uh, are attracted to old-timey spaceships. Mm. Like me. Mm. Yeah. 
And uh, so they take off. They could have like given him a rope or something, but they don't. But just in the nick of time, but right before he's eaten by a sandworm that like opens up under him, uh, a girl on a little scooter, flying scooter, rescues him. Mm-hmm. And this is a lot like when the girl on the little flying scooter rescues people in uh. Final Fantasy XII, the girl being Fran. She is very strong because she reaches out to him with just one arm and he grabs mm-hmm. on and then she lifts him up into the air. She's navigating her scooter with one hand and just holding him by the arm and then she gives him a little hup and like tosses him up behind her and he lands behind her in the seat. You know, she works her core a lot. She really uh, <laughs> focuses on that, like not on bulking up, but on on maintaining size with m- dense, strong muscle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Strong joints, too. Planks, I mean, that, that shoulder did not dislocate. A lot of uh, various kinds of yoga and uh, uh, cross training. Mm-hmm. And uh, you get picked up and brought to the ship. I did not write down the name of the ship. I'm sure it has a name. Probably. <clears throat> we'll get that next time. <laughs> On if you'd like roots. to co- come up with a name for this ship, please write into Podcast at gmail.com. I believe it's called the Meowlinium Falcon. Oh. <laughs> so you get uh, the last thing we'll leave uh, you with is getting on the, the ship and meeting the zany crew. I was very happy to meet the first mate. Yes. (laughs) The first mate is awesome. It is a kitty cat. Yes. His name is Mancha, and he is a loudmouth asshole, and I love him. Yes. He's kind of, Mancha's got got that kind of Cobra Commander voice we talked about before. Mm -hmm. The one that's sort of like this. Mm Mm-hmm. For some reason, Mancha read as coded gay to me. I don't know if you picked up on that, John. Uh, but so did Steve and Simon, right? Oh, of course. So there's just a lot of space gays on this space gay ship. It's a space gay ship. <laughs> That's the lesson they took from Star Wars. So they're like, the characters need to be a little gay. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I mean, the- look at the runaway success of the new trilogy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the other person on the ship is a pirate-looking pirate named Zegrim, who's very piratey. He's got an eye patch. He looked like beard. Jekt. Yeah. He looked just like Jekt, but with an eye patch. I'm pretty sure it is <laughs> Jekt, but just with an eye patch. There's uh, there, uh, he's voiced by Steve Bloom, who is a uh, anime voice actor. I don't know if any of you know him personally. I think he did, um, was it Cowboy Bebop or Irresponsible Captain Tyler? He did a very similar character on on some anime or something. I don't know anything about any irresponsible captains. Mm. And Kisala is a girl. And uh, so far, that seems to be her primary character trait. Mm-hmm. Good core strength and is a is girl. Mm-hmm. girl. Yep. And uh, her father is the captain of the ship. Yep. Dogen Goa. Which means she's meet... off limits. Whoa. What does that mean? Forget about it, boys. She's off limits. Off limits to what? Just Nobody better about try to it, date boys. my daughter. I own a shotgun and I have a six pack of beer. Mm-hmm. Don't you try to take my daughter to prom. You better have her home by 945 and show some respect or I will... Threaten your life. That's right. I'm a man, mm, and that makes that me the keeper of my daughter's being. body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's uh, she's sort of dressed like Yuffie. I think is the best way to describe mm. Kisala. She she definitely has a yup. She's got two little knives like Yuffie. She's got little shorts and a little top, and a practical haircut, which is good. Um, I don't know. It, she seems fine. <laughs> she seems fine. Uh, no one is as good as Mancha, and Mancha doesn't join your party. With, that was so far, very disappointing. I, I, I was having some issues with with uh, which one? Simon's the robot, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Steve, the other one, his Scottish accent was a little cloying. 
it's pretty thick. Yeah. It's like a Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you are going to head through the Rose Nebula Ooh. to planet Zerard. The, uh, the Rose so, Nebula. of civilization in the galaxy, we are told. Yeah. Basically you... the Coruscant. Jaster sure. has lied his way aboard this ship, though. They all think he really is the desert. I don't know if Zerard believes Whatever his that. name was. He definitely doesn't. I feel like Zerard yeah, knows does. the real Oh, no, guy. sorry, Zegram. Zerard's the planet. Zegram is, yeah. is the captain. Let's just call him Jekt. Yeah, No, Jekt, Jekt does... isn't the captain, though. Jekt is someone else. We haven't met yeah, the just captain. he's dude. Nope. But Jekt is like, oh, nice to meet you. In the way, like, if someone came up to me and was like, I'm John Brandon, host of Square Roots, and it wasn't you, I'd be like, nice to meet you, John Brandon. <laughs> I'll go along with your ploy for now, but I know what's up. So that's it for this week, right? We meet this colorful crew, and we're off to the bullshit minigame corner. I mean, well, we the Rose Nebula. talk about that, those mantas attacking and... That's why your ship crashes, I guess? Yeah. I didn't do any of that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's literally it. You go outside to look at the pretty Rose Nebula, and you get attacked by these two manta rays. And something's a, something draws the ship to crash on a jungle planet. Has there been bum, bum, anything bum. in this game that we haven't seen in another game previously? We've seen giant manta rays. We've seen Jekt. We've seen Chaz. We've seen a robot. We've seen a girl. Uh, Have we've we seen, seen a, a blue kitty cat. cat space pirate. Yeah, the blue kitty cat space pirate. I would say that. Fantasy Star 4 had a talking cat in That's space, true. which was probably yeah. a pirate. I mean, everything's in space if you think about it, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have a uh, bullshit minigame corner this week? Not yet. I would say next week, death. Definitely. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Looking forward to that. I am not. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to really try because it's the kind of bullshit minigame I hate. Uh, but we will get there next week. But yeah, not this week. This week we were just kind of establishing the setup. And oh, there was the revelation flow. Uh which is the sort of the sphere grid. Yeah. It is sort plugs. of the sphere grid. It's not so bad. You have to use items, and I think that there's some items you, you... I don't know if you can unlock everyone's everything, because I think there's some items you only get once that can either be used on one board or the other. Oh, golly. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be using a guide for this one. I don't need a bunch of bullshit. Just tell me what yeah. I need to do. Yeah, this game has a lot of finicky little things and certain enemies that you can only beat by... Jumping and then hitting them yeah. and things like that. It's a at least the AI does that. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that next mm. week. <laughs> but uh, uh, okay, yeah, let's go to. Unless Vanessa has a corner she wants to. Mm, I have no corner for this series. Not as of yet. Maybe I'll think of one. Hmm. Matthew, any corners? Mm, nah. Okay. Squarely well, against. Squarely against. Mm. <clears throat> I'll go first. I'm Vanessa goes first. Squarely against the combat system in this game. I don't like it. Oh. I mean, you know, sometimes I play an uh, action game. I'll play a Tomb Raider or an Uncharted or something like that. Dishonored. Love it. Uh, but just not looking for that kind of button mashing in my RPGs. I don't like it. It makes me feel, I don't know, too frenetic. Not chill. Sometimes I just want chill, and these are chilling times. Times I when I just want to chill. Tales. I think I'm not going to enjoy this, but you know what? <laughs> I'll stick with it, and maybe I'll be proven wrong. John, what are you squarely against? I am squarely against. Well, I mean, for now, I think having uh. Ethnic caricatures filling up this village is fine because they're not the the ones on this planet are not particularly negatively portrayed, and you know maybe it is interesting to see traditionally Muslim garb on NPCs, which is not something you usually get in video games, Western or Japanese. I don't know. So we played a game where the Al Jazeera were like heroes. 
Oh, that's tr- that's true. Wait, those were dogs. No, <laughs> how dare you? But well, I mean, I guess the, it's okay. What's to call interesting them about the garb on the the people on this planet on Rosa is it wasn't stereotypical. It wasn't like ridiculous turbans. It was more like well observed uh, clothes. Like there wasn't any you know, like. It was. It didn't really stick out, but it was like if you look at them. There's a lot of people wearing fezes and, uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> traditional head coverings and stuff. But it wasn't in a stereotypical way, mm-hmm. so that was fine. Mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I am, but I am squarely against the combat, like Vanessa. I think I hate it so far. <laughs> the just the combat. I don't hate the game. I'm. I will reserve judgment on the game. Matthew, how did I level up? What are you squarely against? Uh, I'm going to go roundly four this time and be roundly four this uh, kind of intro to the game. I like the setup of the kid kind of he's not like running away. He's not being drawn along by some like greater destiny. Uh, This is a fun little little start to the game, you know, kind of feel like we're going off on a little adventure. Um, I'm sure that he'll turn out to, as Vanessa said earlier, be the king of the sun or some stupid shit. But <laughs> for right now, it's just uh, it's just kind of a fun, like, hey, go pretend to be a pirate. Maybe it'll be like a Chaz. You never found out about Chaz's parents. He was just an orphan. Uh, so I guess that's it for Squarely Against. What do you guys want to do next? You want to talk about the Patreon? Sure. We just released a Patreon episode yesterday. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, uh, no, today. This is this is next week. Oh, yeah. Last week. <laughs> and we'll have, uh, next week, we'll have two Patreon episodes. We'll have us playing, did we finally agree on Until Dawn? I agree on it. And that's fine Matthew. by me. Okay, next week we are going to play Until Dawn, and there will be another Level Up podcast. Subject TBD. John is a scared to play until dawn because he is a scaredy bear, and mm-hmm. uh, I am looking forward to uh, hearing about him being scared and perhaps even seeing him be scared should he choose to stream it. Me too. I will stream it. I don't have a John, working wet. Yeah. Patreon stream. <laughs> well, I, 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 I guess I could. Dude, I don't know how to do that. Stream Instant it for everyone. Scare roots. Oh, Patreon. scare roots. Scare roots. I I will scare roots myself playing this. Uh, but that would have happened uh yesterday. <laughs> but it's gonna be on our YouTube page, so you can go look for it there. You tried All to right. play this uh, game before, but got too scared. Is that right, John? That is exactly what happened. This game is very gory. And scary, and lots of jump scares, and I get really nervous because I am a, a precious little baby who gets mm-hmm. frightened by things. If you are too scared and you feel like um, giving yourself some spoiler, you can at the very least look up what chapters it's actually possible for which characters to die in, because they can't all be eliminated in like the first one, for example. So that might ease your anxiety a little bit. Last time I played, a girl got her jaw ripped off, and it freaked me out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Very bad. <laughs> listeners, if you're not already a patron, uh, if you want to hear the October scare roots, that will be for the patrons on the $3 tier. There's also uh, two Level Up episodes that will come out this month, and that is for patrons at the $5 tier. And if you want to go back in time and vote for us to play a game other than... Uh, uh, Rogue Galaxy, you would want to be on the uh, $8 tier. But, uh, you know, it's too late. We're playing Rogue Galaxy. Yeah, but one uh, w- one thing that we do uh, <laughs> at the end of each episode is is uh, give each of the patrons a shout-out, which I believe John Brandon has indicated he wants to do tonight. Well, sure. I couldn't last time because my uh, iPad ran out of batteries. Uh, let's do it. Do it. Oh, I haven't updated the list. Hopefully it's... This is last week's list. I'll quickie check and see if we have any new people, and if we do, I'll I shout them do. at the end. Okay. All right. So as of last week, our patrons are Benzina Benzoni. Thank you. 
Cameron Cho, thank you. Artie Pavlov, thank you. Eric Garby, thank you very thank much. You. Jonathan Ellsworth, you're awesome. You. Julia Zanella is thank great. You. Justin Benoit, hey. Thank you. Awesome, Justin. Miguel Torres, more thank like you. Miguel is the best. Nick. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. You. Misty Kamada is you. great for supporting us. Tom, also really great. Wonder Thanks. Swan is wonderful. Aaron Thank Bachman you. is Aaron Bestman. Thanks. Uh, Andrew Wayant is once again great. Why uh, Thank Ashley, you so much. <laughs> Ashley T is Ashley T for terrific. Bree Girth uh, is invited. Oh, I found out I have three. Coheed and Cambria songs on my rock band because uh, Julio made me download them. Oh. Mm. So come hang out with us and we can play more Coheed and Cambria. Thank uh, you. Brian Pitt is you. Uh, practically perfect in every way. Brian Thank Stone you. is Stone Cold Great. Brody Toy toys with our emotions by being too amazing. Thank Kiva you. Kiva Moser is mostly masterful david green thank is you great david pascal is like an operating thank system you. of awesomeness go cry wolf i will because i will because that's a good thing to do jake dickerson thank you james hostetler you're great josh anderson thank you very much justin ham hey thank you <laughs> megan sullivan thank you very much meredith anderson i love you and your shorter alls mothmon motha mon calamari thank you <laughs> Nathan Poirot is on this list twice. No, he's not. I mixed up Benoit and Poirot. Nathan Poirot has uh, solved the mystery of who is great, because it is him. Patrick Coover, thank you very much. Patrick W. Bears, thank you. Randy Pierce, hey, thanks. Robert M. Pullum, thank you very much. Robert T., thank you. Ross Hartley, Samu Mitchell, Tracy Townoff, thanks all three of you. Tyler Petty, thank you. Ward Childress, thank you. David Shook, thank you. G. Bailey, thanks. Gregory, hey, thank you. James Plett, my friend, thank you. Jonathan Lee, thank you very much. Joseph A. Rogers, thank you very much. Julian Titan Titus, thank you. Maddie Jorgensen, thank you. Mecca Khan, thank you. As always, and thanks for all the posts and being cool and collaborative. Race Jenkins, everyone's favorite artist, thank you. Stu Skeel, the world's greatest Pennsylvanian, thank you. Xavier Krieger, thank you very much. Biagio Demento, thank you. Devin Sloan, thank you. Dylan Rice, thank you. Sam Harrison, thank you. Vanessa's mom, as always, thank you. And Vanessa's mom... I don't know. I don't know about that one. And finally, Cyril the Wolf. I oh. have a special shout out to Yay. Bobby Midkiff. Welcome, Yay. Bobby. Thank you very much, Bobby. And I'll update this list uh, next week when hopefully, uh, if you, you were missed, you will be on soon. Send us an email. You know our email address. It's squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. If you absolutely cannot be bothered to send us an email, well, welcome to the majority. But you can come see us at our Facebook group, The Square Roots Podcast, for group for smart, cool, really attractive people, something like that. I don't know. Uh, but I go in there all the time because uh, Facebook. It's all right. You can also tweet at us at Square Roots Pod. That's at Square Roots Pod, all one word. I go on the Twitter sometimes. I'm supposed to do it. All the time. Thank you to Ferd K for our awesome cover of the battle theme from Rogue Galaxy. Check out Ferd K on YouTube as youtube.com slash user slash Ferd K 16. And then links to his store and stuff in his show notes. Thank you, Ferd K. And finally, Randy Adam. Are you ready? Because you have leveled up. Randy Adam, you get plus 10 to your Pillow Fort Stealth ability. You have now a bonus of plus 6 to all abilities every time you visit a brewery. And finally, you have received the skill Radical Headbands. Thank you, Randy Adam. Thanks. And uh, I think that's it, guys. I think that is it. So how about uh, we say goodbye for me, John Brandon. 
from me, I should say. From me, John Brandon. And me, Matthew Van Zant. And me, I'm Vanessa. Bye. Bye.